Hello, everybody, and today we're returning to episode four on a game called Rule the Waves, which puts you in the shoes of a sort of a secretary of the Navy or a grand admiral or whatever, uh, and allows you to design ships, fight wars, uh, fight naval battles, things like that. Uh, we are actually in the midst of a war with the British Empire. It was actually an accidental war. I, I miss... Uh, sort of anticipated what two plus tensions would have been. I thought they wouldn't have quite put us at war. Uh, instead, they did put us at war with the mightiest navy in the world, and we are currently fighting them. We've been fighting them for twelve for about eleven months. Uh, we're currently blockaded, although that blockade's kind of been on and off again. Uh, we periodically break it, and then it it resumes itself. Uh, the British Navy is by far the strongest navy in the world, but despite that, uh, because of their massive global commitments, a relatively strong starting Confederate navy, we're playing as a hypothetical Confederate states, which had won its independence during the ultimate general civil war campaign under the historical gamer, and the historical gamer junior is now the secretary of the Confederate navy. Uh, but in the early months of the war, we gained some initial advantages. We actually had a preponderance of forces in the North American station against the British, and we actually took New Brunswick, so we, we got a foothold in Canada against the British. Uh, and we've also taken the island of New Providence in the Caribbean. So we've taken two key territories, despite that, because of the way the game manages victory points, we're actually losing slightly. We're down by about 400 victory, victory points. There really hasn't been a decisive fleet action to this stage. Uh, we've fought several battles, but very rarely have these battles resulted in uh, ships being sunk. Uh, we have lost a number of destroyers. We've lost six destroyers, and we've lost one heavy cruiser uh, on our side. Uh, w or with that being said, uh, the heavy cruiser that we lost wasn't in an engagement. It was apparently forced to be scuttled due to engine problems. We sent it out on commerce rating. And uh, I guess it wasn't well suited to be a commerce raider, and uh, it was forced to scuttle. Uh, meanwhile, we've lost f six destroyers in various battles. Uh, I thought we lost a light cruiser, but I guess not. We've had several light cruisers battered to the point that I thought they were sinking, uh, but each time they, they ended up staying afloat. Meanwhile, the British have lost slightly less. They've lost three destroyers and one light cruiser. But again, most of these battles thus far have not really been decisive, and they've all been more or less small. Uh, if we take a look at the northeast coast right now, uh, we're estimated to have six battleships on station. They're estimated to have six battleships on station. Uh, and if we look at the Caribbean, where the blockade is, we have nine battleships on station. They have seven. So they really don't have a preponderance of forces in terms of battleships, uh, but they do uh, nonetheless have us blockaded due to... I'm not really sure why... Um, you can see here, the reason it says we only have uh, six battleships in the Northeast Station is we're actually transiting some. So, um, actually, no, we're not. We're not transiting any, any battleships. I'm transiting uh, three heavy cruisers, however, to the Caribbean Station to hopefully trigger a battle where we can break the blockade by having some heavy cruisers engaged. Because thus far, every time any cruisers fight, it seems like they're always light cruisers. And uh, the British have quite a few of those. So we've got several in the Caribbean already. Uh, I've assigned a couple to raiding duties, uh, and I've also had to increase the size of our uh, patrol wing uh, by about one. So we're up to 16 vessels under patrol. Additionally, we're building four armed merchant cruisers. My plan is to use these things for actual commerce raiding, although I think they're better for like coastal patrols. Nonetheless, I'm going to try and use them as commerce raiders. We also have several other ships coming due in about a year, uh, and we've halted the construction on our sort of quasi uh, dreadnoughts. These are not really dreadnoughts, but they're kind of like semi dreadnoughts with four 12 inch guns as a main battery, but 10, 10 inch guns as a secondary battery, and they make 19 knots. Uh, but I don't have enough money to kind of build all that. And my thought was there's no way the war will last 32 months or whatever it was when the war started. So I actually paused the construction on those vessels, although they would be within two years uh, if I had not done that. Uh, nonetheless, that's where we're at right now. Uh, the British actually are building the first dreadnought, and so are the Americans for what it's worth. So we really need to hope that neither the, the dreadnought or the battle cruiser come into commission while we're fighting this war because we're not well. We're, we're really not ready to fight uh, any of those kinds of, of ships at this stage. I, I was debating whether I want to lower my, uh, you know, my research and development budget while we're in the midst of a war to free up some additional funds, but I think I'll keep it where it is for now, uh, and we'll kind of see how things progress. So with that being said, let's move ahead to August, which will be the 12th month of the war. Let's see if we can break that blockade.
Japanese government is offering to sell us the rights to the reliable pendulum mechanism for $3.7 million. Uh, free technology, yes. I'm, I'm always good with that. Uh, we also got a research breakthrough on torpedoes. Our submarine sank one enemy vessel for five victory points. We also lost one of our sunk, sank one British vessel. Uh, we had a raider, one raider, one raid, two raid, three raid, four. All right, so actually doing quite a bit of commerce uh, damage with these cruisers that we sent out to raid uh, enemy shipping. Uh, quite a bit, actually. Uh, the British light cruiser Cleopatra sinks four of our merchants for 20 victory points. So quite a few. Uh, one of theirs did a lot of damage, but on the whole, we did better uh, in terms of that. Medium-sized battle, uh, battle in support of land combat. So we actually have troops on Bermuda right now, trying to take that from the British. And there's another battle that's going to be fought in support of those vessels. My guess is it's going to be another light cruiser affair where we've got to have five-inch guns sail in and try and bombard a target. I really wish they would give me something a little bit stronger, more capable of dealing with a land target. Something like a heavy cruiser would be ideal for bombardment. But again, they do not. So... Um, apparently one of our ships has less than 50% of its fuel remaining. Honestly, I don't want to take the loss. I should have just declined the battle. It really... This is one of those things that's really frustrating to me because we just have... We keep getting ships assigned to these fights that are not suited for these kind of operations. Additionally, the enemy has more light cruisers in this sector than we do, so... Uh, the last several times we've fought this, it's kind of been at a, a disadvantage for us. I really hope that's not really a heavy cruiser. Says it's a Cressy class, but if that's a heavy cruiser, we're in trouble. Although the thing is, with fog of war, often these things are misidentified. Uh, they've got some light cruisers up there in the north. There's no way these are heavy cruisers. If they were, they'd be coming right at us. Oh, good God. They are heavy cruisers. Well, we're screwed if the enemy gets to have heavy cruisers against us. There's, I don't understand how they have heavy cruisers there. So Eastport's probably going to sink. Why is it that our Navy always deploys idiotic force compositions? At least Selma can escape. We're going to lose our second light cruiser or first light cruiser of the war. And definitely lose this battle. That's so stupid. Knowingly try and bombard an enemy that has vastly superior forces. Uh, Mick Goods, the victory points needed are kind of subjective. Uh, it's kind of up to you. Um, not really you, but the, the greater the disparity between victory points and uh, your opposition's victory points, the greater the likelihood that you win. Uh, it kind of gives you more negotiating power. What I will say is there, there's another piece to it where you could potentially be behind on victory points, but if you actually sort of starve the enemy out via convoy raiding and things like that, you could cause their government to collapse, which is an automatic victory for you as well, even if you're way behind on victory points. So there's kind of multiple ways to win wars. Generally, the more victory points you have, though, the better your negotiating power at the negotiating table, which then allows you to win, uh, win wars. All right, so we lost one heavy cruiser sunk. They basically lost no damage, and somehow that classifies as a major victory because one light cruiser will really substantially tip the battle of whatever. We aren't blockaded anymore, though, so that's good. With our fleet firmly in control of the waters in the Caribbean, our troops have invaded the British possession of Grand Bahama. Considering the dire war situation, the government's debating whether to seek peace. Your opinion on strategic is sought. Um, we should fight them on until we've secured a victory at the negotiating table. Like, yeah, we're here's the thing is we're behind on victory points. Well, by the way, we're also allied with Japan. We're behind on victory points by about a thousand, but we're not but we're taking all this land, which I don't want to give up in the event of a defeat. So I guess we'll see here. A large battle near the Grand Bahamas, again a convoy attack, battle in support of land combat. British Navy declines battle. We get sixty victory points. Nice. Um a medium sized battle on the southern seaboard, convoy defense, enemy Great Britain. Um 
We don't have any heavy cruisers in this area. Kind of nervous. The enemy is. Oh, we're on the con. We're on the defensive. Great. Really hope we're not going to run into those Cressies again. What happens? Alright, so we're reporting one... We've identified one class of ship, a light cruiser, and potentially... No, they're both light cruisers. Okay. So I don't know if this is the whole enemy force or just a portion of it. One of the things we've been struggling with of late is the fact that the enemy cruisers and destroyers tend to be faster than us. So we've knowingly designed ships that are not as fast as maybe they could be. Uh, we've sort of made trade-offs for things like armament and armor. Uh, rather than going on speed, uh, the British ships tend to be faster than us. So that's just one of those things that we've got to be kind of mindful of because it is a, it is a, a challenge for us to, to fight them in certain types of engagements. If they want to come after us, great. But uh, if they don't proactively charge us, then it can be really difficult. All right, so that light cruiser is detached from our squadron. One of our light cruisers is badly damaged, can't keep up with the rest of our force. This is all the British have to have to bear. We'll at least drive them off on the convoys. We might lose, though, because that one light cruiser of ours is, is suffering to kind of heavy damage here. Now we've got one light cruiser chasing two enemy, uh, two enemy light cruisers. Granted, we have some destroyers in support, but they're kind of in the rear, and I don't yet have the tactic to allow me to order flotilla attacks. We're also out, almost out of ammo, it looks like. Which these things can take a boatload of shells. I don't think we have any secondary guns. Ooh, nice. My other light cruiser is kind of trying to rejoin us. The enemy has apparently left this Calypso class light cruiser to fend for itself. And the Calypso's out of ammo, or the Lady Davis is out of ammo. The Muskogee, however, which has come up, is not. I guess we'll keep sailing around. I don't think we have secondary guns on here. I can double check, but I don't think we do. And they're dead in the water. Great for my destroyers to launch torpedoes, but I don't. I'm playing the Admiral difficulty, which means I can't micromanage the combat. I can't tell everybody what to do. Oh, they just fired a torpedo and a missed. The damn thing's dead in the water. There you go. One torpedo hit right there. Two more coming in. Another hit. Another hit. Jeez. She's a goner. And another hit. All right. Let's see if I'm... The only thing I'm worried about is if that other enemy light -like cruiser maybe um, somehow pulled back to attack the rest of our squadron. So the Calypso sank. We picked up some survivors from it. I don't know where our convoy is. All right. So we didn't lose anything sunk. It gives us a major victory. Uh, we lost one light cruiser with heavy damage, one with light. They had a medium damaged uh, heavy cruiser or light cruiser and a heavy, light cruiser sunk. They also didn't sink any of our merchants, and we got a bonus for having all of our merchant ships survive. So as we exit this battle, we lost a major battle last month. This month we win one, so we get pretty much all the victory points that we lost back. And uh, even the score a bit as the war enters its 13th month. Um, we did get one unachievable bombardment mission. It sent light cruisers in against... Uh, our, heavy, our light cruisers in against enemy heavy cruisers. Um... But yeah, we really need to hope that those battleships don't get built before the war ends. Fighting continues in Grand Bahamas. The enemy sent out feelers of neutral nations about a negotiated peace without border changes or reparations. The president wants to know your opinion. So here's the thing I'm not certain of. We've taken certain provinces from them. Um, I don't really want to force a humiliating peace because the war will end disastrously. But I wouldn't be opposed to a white piece if we get to keep the colonies we took. So I don't know how that works out, but let's see. 
A compromise peace is concluded with no changes in borders. So our four AMCs have been sold off. Breakthrough on ship design with three centerline turrets. And despite the fact that we concluded what the game considers a white piece, we get to keep New Brunswick, which is great. And we get to keep uh, New Providence. Now, we had troops on Grand Bahamas. We did not take the island yet before the, the game ended. So we don't get to keep that territory because we never possessed it. But we did get uh, New Providence, which gives us 20 base capacity. I don't know if there's any actual value to the province. Um, I don't know if base capacity equals resources or anything like that. And then we got New Brunswick with 50 base capacity. Oh, it does have five value. So actually quite a lot of value behind New Brunswick. Um, I don't know. Like, I guess you can't take home provinces, but it's worth the most, I think. Well, it's worth the same as Nova Scotta, so value of five. So that should translate into a greater peacetime naval budget. Uh, now that we've uh, we've taken that territory, I don't. I guess a New Providence just has a value of one. So overall, the value of our uh, economy went up by six, which is equal to Cuba, uh, which I presume is a substantial uh, source of revenue. But I don't. I don't really know. I don't know if there's a way to see the breakdown there. Um, our alliance with Japan really helped in that war. By the way, they gave us several hundred victory points that uh, certainly came in handy. So we've got a bunch of ships. We've won the war. Our navy strength is reduced. We've lost several destroyers in the battle in the war. Uh, we also have 11 subs left, so we lost about 14 submarines, I think. Although I don't think the game tracks submarines sunk, just destroyers and cruisers and things. Um, so if we actually go in here, let's take a look here. We've got 44 destroyers, which actually gives us among the most in the world, despite the fact that the rest of our navy is much smaller. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and let's repurpose some of these ships. So I think we can keep most of the ships where they are, but the Franklin Buchanan class is all going to be switched into the reserve. Actually, we're going to mothball them to save the most money possible. They'll stick around if we end up in another war, but there's just no reason to keep them in active service. Um, the Tacconi class heavy cruisers, we're going to do the same. Uh, that was the one, its sister ship was just worthless and basically had to be... Um, scuttled due to doing a bad job of commerce rating. Um, the Pamlicos, we're going to switch into the reserve fleet there. Oh, wait, no, they have the two nine-inchers. Uh, do I want to do that with the... Oh, yeah, they do, the two single nine-inchers. So we're going to move them into the reserve fleet, save a little bit of money. Remember, the war is over here. Our budget is in the red, and that's without even everything that we need to build building. So we'll keep that in mind. Additionally, all of the destroyers with the short and cramped combinations, the Dun Duncan Ingram, I'm actually going to go ahead and scrap these, uh, seven ships. Scrap those for 117,000. Uh, these will also scrap for another seven ships. And I think we've actually got a few more of these things. So we'll go ahead and scrap just a few more. We scrapped a total of 19 destroyers. Uh, the Boardman is not sort of our frontline uh, destroyer, but it's adequate enough. It's short range, I guess, is kind of to be expected. Uh, it's five torpedo tubes is, is useful. Actually, they've got more torpedo tubes than the Charles Reed. These are the newer class, I think, that I built myself. So we'll kind of leave those as is. Um... Tallahassee's. I'm kind of debating whether it makes sense to reserve fleet a bunch of these light cruisers. Almost all of our light cruisers, but we have several new ones that'll be coming on the way soon. Um, I don't know. We have our naval budget was decreased by so much. That's kind of a little bit frustrating. Again, we don't even have half of our ships. So we're trying to build building at the moment. So we, we basically have no money. Um, tricky one. I think. Six inches, the Shenandoah. More of a. I'm going to reserve fleet some of these Braxton Brags. I'm not going to scrap them, but I'm going to reserve. I don't think we need. Quite as strong of a standing navy at the moment. Tensions are relatively 
low, so we'll reserve a, a fleet eight of our battleships. We'll mothball three of them. Um, that saves us a bit of money. Almost back into the black here. We've got the four Virginias that are going to remain in the active fleet. Um, so that's good. Building bigger docks, so we'll start building our first dreadnought shortly. Um, now, once some of these ships start completing, we'll have a little bit more money. The problem is we're still kind of a ways out. I guess we'll lower intelligence on the British as well. I don't think we have any intel on anybody else. But, uh, let's leave that there. Is is Rule the Waves two supposed to come out in third quarter, Sev? I haven't I haven't heard that. Are they using the old game engine? I'm fine with named ships. I just uh, I'd prefer it to be like in a new class. Maybe we'll name some of our dreadnought battleships after you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and jump forward a few months here. So we're gonna kind of get ahead to the end of 1905, I think. President has the idea of a shooting competition for all ships in the Navy. Believes it'll increase morale. Uh, an excellent idea. I don't see it giving me a trade-off one way or the other. Lady Davis wins it. Well, she was in multiple battles, in fact. If we go to the light cruiser Lady, Lady Davis. She has five battle stars. This vessel was in a number of engagements, actually. You can see here, I don't think we had any battleships. Actually, I think, was the Virginia in a battle? Yeah, the Virginia has a battle star. So she was in one battle, which is kind of a, uh, you know, we had some heavy cruisers that were engaged. It was kind of a bloodbath that no one actually won. Um, let's go ahead and pause one of these, like, cruisers just to get us back into the black. And we're into January of 1905. Uh, funds back in the black, monthly budget in the black, just barely. Half of our building ships are three plus years out. I'm kind of tempted to scrap the THG class, even just on the ways here. Uh, they haven't, only one month has been progressed on them. They're going to be crazy expensive, and they're going to be so obsolete by the time they come off the ways. Um, I'm not really sure. But, uh, let's see here. All right. Let's go ahead one more month. So pr progress is still being made. New docks are completed. Weight savings inventions. Let's get some of these light cruisers off the off the ways. I didn't want to wait nine months to do anything, but it looks like we'll probably have to. So several of these light cruisers are being brought into. Um, Commission and oh wow, this is I've never seen a positive development here, but apparently the cruiser DeSoto's commission in the Navy during trials it's found that the ship is easily surpassing her design speed. So that is great news. And we developed new naval guns, 13 inch guns. Granted, they're negative one quality, but they're still 13 inchers. And let's get all of these ships completed. These light cruisers are coming off the ways. So that frees up a bit of money, four million dollars. Now, granted, we've got to go ahead and resume construction on some of these other ships. So it's good to know that actually these these light cruisers can exceed their design speed, some of these new ones. Um, the Mill Midledgeville, actually they make 24 knots instead of 23. So awesome. It's, uh, you know, our light cruisers were slow to begin with in the last war. We learned that was, we, we kind of learned that the hard way. Uh, meanwhile, nobody's completed any dreadnoughts yet, although everybody except Japan is building them. Well, France hasn't laid any down yet, but they do have a battle cruiser they're building. So we really need to get into the Dreadnought game. Um, but I've also got these light cruisers that are kind of sitting around that uh, are still a ways out that need to be built. I don't know, guys. Should we scrap the THG class on the ways? We spent the... We kind of sunk the investment cost. They'll probably have some value. 19 knots and quite a, quite a few heavy guns. I imagine they'll have some value in any future war. Um, we're actually going to scrap the Franklin Buchanan class. Doesn't save us a ton of money, but we're going to do it. Gives us a little bit of money. 
let's see what we can design. And with that cliffhanger, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode, episode number four of our Rule the Waves Let's Play series. We have successfully concluded our war with Great Britain, and while the game may consider it a white piece, I can consider it nothing more than a smashing victory, nothing less than a smashing victory. We seized part of Canada, we seized part of the British Caribbean islands, we almost took Bermuda, but we weren't quite able to do that, and we were able to get out of the war without any real serious setback back for our Navy. So the Confederate States Navy went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the greatest naval power in the world, the British Empire, and came out substantially ahead, despite the fact that the game considers it a white piece. With that being said, we are vastly behind in the Dreadnought race, in the race for these super battleships with uh, multiple heavy gun caliber turrets, uh, with all one uniform sort of uh, caliber, essentially the modern battleship that it would become. And we need to address that, but we'll address that in our next video in episode number five. Until then, I hope you guys are enjoying this series, and this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.